So today we're going to learn about linear population growth um, via population growth models. So a population growth model is a way to describe how a population is growing, but the population could be humans or rabbits or money in a bank account. Um, it's pretty versatile. We're going to talk about population as a sequence of numbers. So for example, we could write the populations of Greenfield on January 1st of each of the last 20 years. And this would just be an ordered list of numbers. So P sub 0 is the size of the initial population. P sub 1 would be the size of the population after one unit of time has passed. P sub 2, the size of the population after two units of time has passed, etc. P sub n will represent the size of the population after n units of time has passed. What we're interested in are the transition rules, the rules that tell you what happens to the population at each transition. For a linear growth model, the population grows or shrinks by the same amount at each transition. The sequence that results from linear growth is called an arithmetic sequence, which we talked about in our um, Intro to Sequences lecture. And a linear growth model needs two pieces of information, the starting amount and how much the population grows or shrinks per transition. So let's do an example. We have a nuclear reactor that has a 100 ton tank for storing high level radioactive waste. There are 35 tons of waste in the tank already, and the reactor generates 5 tons per year. And I want to write recursive and explicit formulas for P sub n and determine how long it will take to fill the tank. Okay, so recursive, um, for many people, recursive tends to be the easier formula to write, though the less useful formula in terms of solving, um, answering a question. So I'm going to write the formula for recursive first. So um, P sub n, I want a formula for P sub n, so that means I should have something in the form P sub n equals. And um, we generate five tons each year. So we say take the amount that you had last year, which is P sub n minus 1, one year ago, one year before the nth year, and add 5 to it. And then for explicit, I want a formula, P sub n equals, but I'm not allowed to use P sub n minus 1. I'm not allowed to use how much I had the year before. So for my explicit formula, I need to know my initial amount, that I started with 35 tons, and I'm adding 5 every year for n years. So I have 35 plus 5n. <clears throat> The explicit formula is much more useful in determining how long it will t take the tank to fill up because I need to know how long it takes until I have 100 tons, and that's my population. N is representing um, time here, so I'm going to replace P sub N with a 100 and solve for the N. And you could probably have answered this question without actually writing an equation and doing algebra, which is fine, right? You would just say, oh, okay, well, there's 35 tons in there now. That means I have room for 65 more tons. Divide that by 5 tons per year. 65 divided by 5 would be 13, I think. Yeah, 13. And when I solve this equation, I'm also going to get 13, right? Subtract 35 from both sides. So I get 65 equals 5n. Then you divide both sides by 5, so you get n equals 13 years. The 5 in this problem showed up in both formulas. I've got this plus 5, and I've got the 5 here. Um, that 5 is called the common difference, since 5 is the difference between populations in any two successive years. Um, in some cases, we're given different starting information. Instead of the amount at the very beginning, um, we can be given some different information, and we could still find a linear growth model. So in this case, I'm given P3 and P6. So I'm going to make a little table here. I've got N and P sub N, and I'm going to put in the information I know and, and the information I want. P sub 0 is what I really need in order to write my um, explicit formula. And 
I'm going to put in the stuff that I know here. P3 is 28 and P6 is 40. So I need to figure out what is the common difference. Well, to get from 28 to 40, that's a difference of 12. Um, but, but that goes over one, two, three transitions, right? 28 to something, something to something, and then something to 40, right? So there's three transitions there. Um, that has a total um, change in value of 12 units. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I think I should be able to increase by 4 at a time. So plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, that'll give me a total increase of 12. So 28 plus 4 is 32, and 32 plus 4 is 36, and 36 plus 4 is 40. And then I could also work backwards knowing um, that to go forwards, I add 4, so to go backwards, I'd subtract 4. 28 minus 4 is 24, minus 4 is 20, minus 4 is 16. So now I have tons of information. I should be able to write a recursive and an explicit formula. So my recursive formula, I know that P sub n is always equal to the population right before it, P sub n minus 1 plus 4. And my explicit formula, P sub n equals my, how much I start with, I'm starting with 16, and I'm adding 4 over and over and over again, and repeatedly adding 4 is multiplication. So 4 times n. So you don't need to memorize these formulas, because we just did two examples where I wrote them down without knowing the general formulas. Um, but you can if you want, or you can write them on your note card for your tests. Um, recursive formula, you need to know p sub 0 is the starting amount, and then p sub n is equal to p sub n, n minus 1 plus the common difference. And for explicit, p sub n is the starting amount plus n times the common difference. All right, another example. A manufacturer currently has on hand 387 widgets. During the next two years, the manufacturer will be increasing his inventory by 37 widgets per week, assuming that there are exactly 52 weeks in a year. How many widgets will the manufacturer have on hand after 20 weeks? All right, so let's use W for widgets. W sub N is going to be 387, how many he has now, plus 37 each week for N weeks. He's doing this over the next two years, so n is going to be from 0 to 104. All right, so how many widgets will he have on hand after 20 weeks? So w sub 20, that should be 387 plus 37 times 20, which is 387 plus 37 times 20, 1,127 widgets. How many widgets will the manufacturer have on hand after n weeks? Oh, I already wrote a rec I already wrote an explicit formula. W sub n is 387 plus 37n. That's my explicit. And then my recursive, that's where I use the number um, from a previous week. So WN is however many I had last week, plus 37. How many weeks until the manufacturer has 720 widgets? Well, it's less than 20, because after 20 weeks, he'll have 1,127. So how long until he has 720? Well, I'm going to use my explicit formula. It tends to be more handy for answering questions. And I'm going to replace W sub N with 720 widgets. 387 plus 37 n. So I want to solve for n the number of weeks this is going to take. So um, I just subtract 387. Again, you could probably do this question without um, setting up an equation and solving it, but um, it's nice to have a method. So 333 equals 37 n. Divide both sides by 37. 
and I get n equals 333 divided by 37 is 9. Take 9 weeks to get to 720 widgets. All right, so let's um, complicate this problem a little bit. The widget manufacturer is trying to build up his inventory rather than put all of these widgets on the market at once. It costs $10 per week to store a widget. He plans to store all of his widgets for the next two years. How much money total will he spend on storage? All right, so let's, let's break this down. Um, w sub zero, right, is 300. 387 widgets. He has to store those 387 widgets for a full two years. So the cost for those 387 ten dollars per week for 104 weeks, right? Because he has to store them for two years which has 104 weeks in it. So we multiply this out 387 times 10 times 104. Those 387 widgets, the original widgets, are going to cost $402,480 to store for two years. Now, a week later, he's going to have 37 more widgets, right, plus 37 more. The cost to store those 37 is going to be 37 widgets times $10 per week times they only need to be stored for 103 weeks because for the first week they didn't exist. They were being built. Okay, so I do that. 37 times 10 times 103 is $38,110. And then next week I'm going to have 37 more. And we need to store those. The cost will be 37 widgets times $10 per week. But those 37 only need to be stored for 102 weeks. Thirty-seven times ten times one oh two is thirty-seven thousand seven hundred forty dollars. So this is gonna keep going, right? So I'm gonna do this for two years. So this is um, one week, two weeks, keep going. I'm going to add, finally, 37 widgets at the very end here. 37 widgets times $10 per week for one week. So that's $370. <clears throat> Now I have to add up all these costs. All right, so I have to add 402,480. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the 402,480 separate for now. I need to add 38,110 plus 37,740 plus 370. So it equals some amount. I don't know what it is, X. And when you add a list of numbers backwards and forwards, you should get the same amount. So I'm going to add it backwards. So 370 plus dot, 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 plus 38,110 also should equal x. Now if I add these two equations together, 38,110 plus 370 is 38,480. And 38,110 plus 370 is 38,480. And x plus x is 2x. How many 38,480s do I have? Well, how many weeks am I doing this? So this last one was for one week, right? and the first one was for 103 weeks. So that is 
um, a cost for each of the weeks from the 1st to the 103rd. So that's 103, 38, 480s. So I have 3840, 480, um, being added together 103 times. And that gives me 2x. So when I multiply that, I get 3963440 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. So my cost for the additional 37 widgets that I make each week is 198, 1,981,720. And then I need to add the um, cost for my original 387 widgets, which was 402,480. So my total cost here is this number plus this number. And that gives me 2,384,200. So that leads us to the arithmetic sum formula. So I did this fancy little thing of writing the terms um, of my sum forwards and backwards. Um, but you can also use this arithmetic sum formula. If you're trying to add a long list of numbers that happen to form an arithmetic sequence, meaning that the way that you get from one number to the next is to add or subtract the same amount, um, then you get the answer. Just add the first term and the last term. Multiply the result by the number of terms and then divide by 2. So that's what I did. I added the first term and the last term. I multiplied by the number of terms, which was 103. And then when I was solving this equation, I divided by 2. So add the first term and the last term, multiply by the number of terms, divide by 2. Do one more example where we use the formula. So we had this nuclear reactor, stores 35 tons of waste, produces 5 tons per year. The town where that reactor is located decides to charge a tax on the company that owns the reactor. Each year, the town is going to charge the reactor $1,000 for each ton of waste that it is holding in storage. Assuming the tank isn't empty, how much will the reactor have to pay the town over the next five years, starting this year? Okay, so this year they have 35 tons of waste. 35 tons of waste, and they have to pay $1,000 per ton. So times 1,000. The next year, so that's the first year. We're doing the next five years. Um, the next year, they're going to have 40 tons of waste because they add five tons per year times $1,000 per ton. The next year, they're going to have 45 tons of waste times $1,000 per ton. And then 50 times 1,000. So I've got one, two, three, four years up here. One more year, 55 tons times $1,000 per ton. So I'm trying to add 35,000 plus 40,000. 40,000 plus 45,000 plus 50,000 plus 55,000. All right, so my formula I mean, there's only five numbers here, so you could just type them all into your calculator, which we will do um, to verify that this formula works. But first, I'm going to use the formula. It says, um, add the first term and the last term. So I'm going to add my 35,000 and my 55,000. That gives me 90,000. And it says, take that number and multiply by the number of terms. So I'm adding one, two, three, four, five terms. So I'm going to multiply by five. That gives me 450,000. And then I divide by two. Divided by two, 225,000. Oops. $225,000 is the total tax this company will pay over the next five years. And you should double check, right? Add in your calculator 35 plus 40 plus 45 
plus 50 plus 55 and you do get 225,000. So the formula works. <coughs> All right, that's it for the um, lecture portion of this class. You can now start your activities. Um, let me know if you have any questions.